This is the final, finale, finish, totally last, five nights at Freddy's timeline. It's finally over. That is the end. Last FNAF lore theory NAF is at its end. The end, final, final, final FNAF theory. No, uh, let me save you some work if you brighten the image you see on screen right now. You'll see that there's a question mark there, since, you know, I always come back. We will be taking this timeline game by game. We will ignore every game that comes after the game that we are focusing on. However, we will allow any game that came previously to the game that we are looking at, as well as any important game-related plot points from the books. Now onto the timeline of Pizzeria Simulator, as well as Ultimate Custom Night. Fredbear's Family Diner was opened before Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. However, I have reason to believe that Freddy Fazbear's was opened shortly before Fredbear's Family Diner closed down. Henry, the owner of Fredbear's, joined in helping William open up Freddy Fazbear's, with Freddy's first robot being Spring Bonnie. Freddy's was a side project for Henry. Henry's main focus was on his restaurant, Fredbear's Family Diner. However, the popularity of Freddy's grew enough for William to sell Freddy Fazbear toys. So Henry bought a toy for his youngest daughter. That is why there is a toy in her room. Freddy's was opened and sold toys shortly before Fredbear's closed down. Henry's son Evan goes to Freddy's a lot, without permission. Because of Evan's disobedience, Henry then builds a small underground bunker to keep an eye on Evan's whereabouts. Right behind his house, which is that hunk of dirt within the racing game. However, the bunker is not yet finished at this time. Remember that. Due to the competition of Fredbear's, William kills Henry's daughter Charlotte in secret. In order to get Fredbear's shut down, without competition, people will go to Freddy's instead. William then drives away from the crime scene. William eventually ends up at Evan's house, while Henry is away. William then dresses in a three toed non animatronic costume, because it is raining and lures Evan away to where his sister was killed. That would be what the crying child saw. Henry then comes home to find that Evan broke out, and Henry believes that he went to the same place he always goes. Freddy Fazbear's. Little does Henry understand the actual situation. Henry's oldest son Mike, the kid in grey watching TV, tries to get Henry to go easy on Evan but to no avail. Still thinking Evan went to Freddy's, Henry gets into his car, and drives to Freddy Fazbear Jr.'s where he is turned away at the door by possibly the night security guard. He is turned away because at this point before Fredbear's closes, Henry is not exactly the boss or the co-boss of Freddy's. He is just a consultant. We know that Junior's has to be Freddy's first location because the building is right around the corner from Evan's house. Exactly like the layout from the house to Freddy's in the fourth game. It is possible that Evan got away from William and when he gets back home, Henry makes Evan sorry by locking him in his room which leads into the events of the fourth game. Fredbear shuts down due to the murder, and Henry works full-time with William at Freddy Fazbear Jr.'s. Henry also brings along both the puppet and Fredbear into Freddy's restaurant. The founders of Freddy's built new spring lock mechanisms inside of the robot suits. The spring locks, within the suit, pulls back the robot parts, so that a worker can't climb inside and wear it as a suit. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1983. Because of the death of his daughter, Henry is paranoid that another one of his children might be killed. So he puts a camera in the son's Fredbear stuffed animal, as well as extra cameras around the house and around Freddy's. Evan's sister also watches over Evan in spirit. William's next victim, and the first murder of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, is the first of the two spirits to possess Golden Freddy. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1983. Due to the popularity of Freddy Fazbear's, William opened up a sister location called Circus Baby's Pizza World. William had built new robots in his own twisted image, for this new restaurant. One robot he made in honor of his wife, one robot in honor of his daughter, and two of those robots were based on the Fredbear and Friends TV show. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1983. The phone guy states that multiple spring lock failures happened at a sister location, presumably killing an employee. This location was Circus Baby's Pizza World. We know that this spring lock incident happened there because of what Baby says on the fourth night of the sister location game. Now we have two possibilities on what character this suit looks like. On one hand, this could be the original suit of the entered mask. That would explain where the entered mask came from. The second option could be, that this is a funtime version of Spring Bonnie, which would explain the origin of Shadow Bonnie. I personally believe, that this is the suit that has the entered mask on it, and that explains where the entered mask came from. But now that does not mean, that another spring lock failure could not have happened. It is totally possible that an employee of Freddy Fazbear's died in Spring Bonnie, which results in the ghostly Shadow Bonnie. However, it is the incident at Baby's Pizza World that broke the camel's back, causing the classic spring lock suits to be temporarily retired 
to be looked at by a technician, although employees are now forbidden to wear them as a suit. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1983. On the opening day of Circus Baby's Pizza World, we not only have a Springlock incident, but also another horrific incident take place. William's own daughter Elizabeth accidentally died at the claw of the baby robot, the same robot that William Afton had made. Despite numerous warnings from William, Elizabeth disobeyed her father and got too close to baby. Now Elizabeth haunts the baby robot, turning the original blue eyes of the robot to her green eyes. It is possible that the little boy Evan was there and also saw Elizabeth get killed. We know this because of the mouths on the stomachs of his nightmares, nightmares that Evan would later have in the hospital. Those details on the nightmare's stomachs directly call back to how Elizabeth got killed. The robot's stomach opened and snatched up Elizabeth, as if the stomach was eating food. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1983. Due to the death of his daughter, William shuts down Baby's Pizza World and blames the shutdown on gas leaks. While Henry, being unaware of Elizabeth's death, agrees to let William store the Funtime robots in Henry's underground bunker. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1983. Throughout the week, the older brother Mike constantly scares Evan. At the end of the week, the older brother eventually takes his antics too far when he and his friends puts the crying child into the mouth of Fred Bear. Unfortunately, the robot accidentally bites the crying child, and the child becomes a victim of the Chomp of 83. This is a side note, the Chomp of 83 affects the events of Five Nights at Freddy's World. However that game is so meta and breaks the fourth wall too much, I don't want to talk about it. Plus Five Nights at Freddy's World doesn't add much to the story's timeline anyway. The most important thing to know, is that there is a connection between the two worlds. It's just a loose connection from a timeline perspective. Now we can't get back to the main games. Without a son to constantly watch over, Henry abandons his bunker and leaves it in the hands of William. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1983. This bite puts Evan in the hospital, and here we have the different theories on the nightmares. Either Evan has the nightmares while in the hospital, or Mike has the nightmares during or soon after Evan died. It is possible that Mike had those nightmares, because Mike draws Nightmare Fred Bear in his logbook. While in the hospital, his older brother says sorry to Evan, and Evan's sister promises to put Evan back together. Then Evan passes away. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1983. Henry and William both agreed to lock away the suit of Fredbear due to the bite. Henry agreed because the robot killed his son on accident, and William agreed because having Fredbear around would be bad for business. Since the incident happened out in the open, however Fredbear's endoskeleton remained in the building. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1983. In order to replace the condemned spring lock suits, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza built new robots and designed these new characters after the characters on the Fredbear and Friends TV show. It is possible that it took over a year to build these fall robots. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1984. William strikes again, killing four kids at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza on June 26, 1985. The first of the four to go was Susie. William ran over her dog, dresses in the spring bonnie suit, and lures Susie away with promise that her dog is alive. That night on the 26th, the puppet stuffs the four dead kids into the four new robots. The following morning according to the second article, there are five kids in total missing in Freddy's first location, and William has been caught and charged. However the bodies are never found, so William gets let go due to a lack of evidence. This took place on June 27, year 1985. Due to the murders, the company boards up the safe rooms. June 27, 1985. According to the third article, Freddy's first location was being threatened with shutdowns due to sanitation violations. Blood was coming from the robots. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1985. Due to the closing of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, William reuses his fun time robots and rents them out to private birthdays. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1986. Mike takes the job of doing maintenance work on the fun times. And here we have a possibility on who Mike is. Mike is Henry's oldest son. Henry eventually learned the truth about Elizabeth's death and sent Mike into the underground bunker to free Elizabeth. Henry wouldn't want anyone to suffer. That would explain why Elizabeth does not recognize Mike, and that would explain why we see Henry's lamp in Mike's house. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1986. Hi hello this is another side note. During the week Mike goes home to watch The Immortal and The Restless. I believe that show represents the troubles between William and his wife. If William's wife left him, then that would explain why William made Ballora in his wife's image. Out of grief. Got that? Great now back to the timeline. At the end of the week, all of the robots join themselves together to fuse into Ennard. Where Ennard scoops out Mike and makes him hollow inside. So the robots can wear Mike. To escape into the outside world. 
month unknown, day unknown, year 1986. Ennard keeps up the appearance of a normal person for a few days, however eventually Mike's body starts to fall apart, and near the end of the week, Ennard leaves Mike due to his body rotting away, but Mike somehow still lives on, only now he lives in shadows due to his appearance, and smell. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1986. Mike blames his father Henry for what happened to him, and Mike vows to find his father. Month unknown, day unknown, year 1986. Due to the murders Freddy's try and save face, with the grand reopening of a new restaurant, their second location. A larger location with new robots, with security features. These new robots are based on the toy merchandise of the Freddy Fazbear brand. Since the new robots are based on their toy merchandise, the new robots are called the toy animatronics. And the four old animatronics from the first location, with her away in the back room of the second location, where they are only used for parts. November 1, 1987. The first night guard finishes his week, and goes to day shift on November 8, 1987. Jeremy starts his shift at 12 o'clock a.m. on November 8, 1987. Rumors start to spread, during the day on November 9, 1987. According to Fonga on night 3, Fonga then states on night 4, that there is an investigation going on during the day of November 10, 1987. On night 5 we learn from phone guy that the building is on lockdown a lockdown that started that day on November 11, 1987. Jeremy then gets his paycheck on November 12, 1987, and it is here that William strikes again, killing five more kids during the day shift, and causing the restaurant to close for a while. Jeremy works one final day, getting his overtime paycheck on November 13, 1987, before he gets moved to the day shift later. Mike uses the name Fritz to get hired to take the place of Jeremy on the night shift. Mike does this to potentially find his father and possibly free the souls of the original robots. However he tampers with the robots and gets fired on his first day for that, as well as for having odor. On November 14, 1987, during the day of November 14, Jeremy starts his day shift and is instructed to stay close to the robots. In doing so, he becomes the victim of the bite of 87 and this causes the new location to shut down, and Freddy's is forced to reopen its old location. Freddy Fazbear scraps the toy robots, and reuses the old robots when they move back into the first location. Because of the bite of 87 Freddy Fazbear's restricts the robots to moving around only at night. Freddy Fazbear's reopens its first location in 1988. Phone Guy died on November 6, 1993. Mike starts on November 8, 1993, to replace Phone Guy. During the week, Evan tries to reach out to his older brother Mike. This happens between the 8th and the 14th. Mike gets his check on November 12, 1993. Mike gets his overtime check on November 13, 1993. Mike gets fired for tampering with the robots, as well as for odor on November 14, 1993. And Freddy Fazbear's closes permanently on December 31, 1993. Not too long after Freddy Fazbear's closes for good William comes back to the boarded up building, and destroys the possessed robots of his victims. One of the ghosts of Golden Freddy, aka Shadow Freddy, leads the robots to the door of the safe room, where the killer is hiding. Since robots cannot enter into the safe room, this ghost leads them to their destruction, so that they may corner William as ghost instead of being robots. Month unknown day unknown year presumably 1994. After the robots are destroyed, all five ghosts corner their killer inside the safe room. As a result, William puts on the old spring lock bonnie suit, to keep the ghost from haunting him. However due to the rain dripping through the ceiling, the spring locks within the suit go off, and end up killing William. And William's soul becomes linked to the circuit boards in his suit. Month unknown day unknown year presumably 1994. With their killer gone all six of the ghosts are reunited to celebrate the birthday of the second ghost of Golden Freddy, also known as Evan. The birthday he never had. His sister the puppet throws together his birthday, and this puts her brother back together. And all five ghosts have their happiest day, and go to heaven. But the first victim, the puppet and the first Golden Freddy victim Cassidy, stay behind because William now possesses the suit he died in. Month unknown day unknown year presumably 1994. Many years later, a horror attraction opens up. This haunted house is called, Fazbear's Fright. It was built around the unsolved mysteries of Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. The haunted house company takes the destroyed robots from the first location, as well as the scrap toy robots from the second location, and decorates the haunted house with them. Month unknown day unknown year 2023. Mike takes the job at the haunted house in hopes of finding his father. Month unknown day unknown year 2023. On the second night William now known as Spring Trap was recovered from the first pizzeria and released into the haunted house attraction. It is then that the Mike hallucinates the old robots attacking him. 
month unknown day unknown year 2023. After the second night, it is then revealed that the puppet was found and released into the haunted house, month unknown day unknown year 2023. At the end of the week Mike burns down the haunted house, in hopes of getting revenge on his father. However Mike does not realize that it is William inside the costume, and not Henry. So Mike burns down the haunted house out of revenge, however both William and his first victim, the puppet, survived the burning. Mike also survived. Month unknown day unknown year 2023. Not too long after Fazbear's fright burns down, Mike buys a Freddy's franchise package, and Mike becomes the manager of his own Freddy's location. Month unknown day unknown year unknown. During his first week, Mike finds four familiar robot faces Molten, Baby William, and the puppet, and brings everyone who is left from Freddy's into Mike's location. Now there are five people gathered together in one place, a place with no escape. Month unknown day unknown year unknown. Once all five people who were left are gathered together in the building, Henry reveals that he was the one who brought everyone together. So Henry can destroy everything that remains of Freddy Fazbear's pizza. Henry locks down the whole building so no one can escape, and proceeds to burn it to the ground. No one is left. Month unknown day unknown year unknown. After William was killed in the fire Cassidy the first spirit of Golden Freddy, holds William's spirit trapped in a hell of Cassidy's own making, where William faces off against everything from his past. Old Man Consequences tries to convince Cassidy to let William go to his actual hell, and for Cassidy to move on into heaven. Cassidy begins to twitch off into the darkness, not wanting to let go but lets go anyway. Cassidy becomes free at last. But what happens to William? Well, that's a story for another day. The end. Question mark. Hallelujah.